back, opening day, SEC style at Baumwalker Stadium in Fayetteville. The Razorbacks off an incredible 50 win campaign a year ago, hoping to begin a year that will end in Omaha, ready to entertain the Illinois State Redbirds. And welcome up to the booth. I'm Brett Dolan. He is still Troy Eklund. Delighted to have you with us for a new season. Troy, it feels like we're in the golden era of Razorback baseball, so each new opening day brings more excitement and expectations. Oh, you're absolutely right. The fans are excited about opening day, and really the players are too. It was an amazing season last year, but they've been thinking about this day since June. They want to get back to Omaha and win it all. Speaking of last year, I'm not sure where you begin, where you start with all the accomplishments. Oh, just an amazing season last year. They did everything they wanted to do, winning every conference weekend. Kevin Copps was phenomenal, and they just got to build from that, Brett. Won every single series until that uh, Super Regional. It's always an honor to start on opening day, and it goes to Connor Nolan. Yeah, Connor Nolan, great experience he has on the mound. When he's on, he's got a really good one seam fastball that dives down and into right handers. You're going to see a lot of ground balls when he's got his stuff working. He's healthy and ready to go. And here's the lineup he will face today for Illinois State out of the Missouri Valley Conference under head coach Steve Holm. Has some veterans, has some newcomers. Ryan Cermak is their top prospect, their center fielder. Jake McCall had a huge year last season especially in conference play, and he will be the cleanup batter and play first base. Troy, it was 14 degrees this morning when we woke up, but there's sunshine out. We're at mid-40s on the uh, thermometer and ready to get this one underway. Yeah, a lot of frost on the grass earlier this morning, and it's, uh, it's really shaped up to a decent day. It's going to have a great weekend. Carl Soberano steps in to begin things, and this season is underway. Young man in his third year at Illinois State. And a couple of home runs last year for a team that finished below 500. It was a down year for the Redbirds. They have been a giant killer in years past. And there is Robert Moore back in the outfield grass, throwing out Soberano to begin the game. You just feel like anything hit to Moore is just an automatic out. The guy's got tremendous range. And Dave Van Horn talked about him not being as flashy this year, just making the play. <laughs> Good look at Connor Nolan. We remember his season a couple of years ago, Troy, when he made 19 starts as a freshman. It's hard to believe here we are fast forwarding three years ago, and this is just his 23rd career start. I don't think he would have ever imagined that after 19 starts as a freshman. And Eclipse, Aiden Huggins. There's that run on that fastball I was talking about. Nolan has a lot of movement. And he's got to control it. See that thing right up and in and just clipped, I think, that elbow pad of Huggins. That's why you wear it. Hey, he's on base for a couple of minutes into the season. Here's Ryan Cermak. Ryan Cermak might be the Robert Moore of this Illinois State team. You see his numbers a year ago. Led the team with 40 runs batted in, 11 home runs. A lot of scouts here to see the Razorbacks. They'll also be watching Ryan Cermak. Yeah, definitely a talented player. and He's going to turn a lot of heads this season. You mentioned that one seam sinker for Nolan. At times in the fall, it made hitters look foolish. That one will get by Moore, who is playing up the middle. And that's a base hit. And Huggins will cruise to third. The Redbirds have runners on the corners. Well, that's what happens when you give opponents free base runners. And great inside out swing by Cermak. Watch him keep his hands inside that baseball and just poke it right past Moore. No chance for Robert to get to that baseball. Just hit too sharply and just an easy first to third for Huggins. Indeed, but Connor pitched Troy in the last scrimmage, I want to say on Friday, and gave up three runs in four and two thirds innings. A couple of home runs. Braden Webb hit a monster shot against him, as did Lanzilli. Here's Jake McCaw. 367 average a year ago, and he takes strike one. 
But for the most part, at least when I was able to see Connor Nolan, he was awfully effective facing his own hitters, of course. A great lineup of Razorbacks in the box. Yeah, I had a chance to watch him in the fall and in the early spring, and his stuff looks good. He throws a lot of strikes, so you can be aggressive in the box against Connor Nolan. Didn't miss by much. A plate umpire here in game one of the series, Mark Wagers. Craig Harmon, Michael Mazzarisi, and Keith Sanders complete our quartet of umpires here for this opening series. A ground out, a hit batter, and a single. That one's going to be punched in the left of base hit, and the Redbirds are on the board first. Jake McCaw does it again, and the Redbird dugout has some early life. I really like that approach by Jake McCaw. Didn't try to do too much with that pitch. It was in the outer third, and he just went right with it. Just a great job of hitting. Again, that ball's up in the zone, and both balls have been hit hard against Connor Nolan have been up. Of course, as a ground ball pitcher, doesn't always mean those ground balls will be right at infielders either. Here's Adrian Flores. He is the DH, also the backup catcher. Not a big guy, but right-handed batter in there against Connor Nolan. That's the pitch with that movement. I was getting ready to say, Troy, that he had that one-seam sinker, but also working with a cutter, a pitch very similar to probably what Kevin Copps tried to throw or did throw last season. I don't think they ever got the name of what Copps threw. It was just almost the invisible ball. But yeah, Nolan has got, he's always had that big curve ball that he's relied on. And if he can develop that cutter and control it on that outer third, he's going to be tough. Well, came so far in and nearly hit Flores. Going to take some getting used to for everybody in the ballpark this year that the visitors are in the third base dugout. We hear a lot of noise coming out of that third base dugout, but that's the Redbirds and not the Razorbacks this season. It's definitely the warmer dugout, the sun dugout so. today. <laughs> yeah, they've got bright sunshine, not the case for the hometown team. Nolan could use a ground ball at an infielder. That pitch a little bit in, the throw to third is not going to get Sir Mack. He got a good break. McCall wasn't following him to second. Yeah, really great lead. You saw him kind of hop, hop a couple times, and Nolan didn't turn his head and stop that movement. Just a great job right there by Ryan Cermak. He's in there pretty easily. The cast now 3-0 and to Flores. Santa Cruz, California native, providing a pretty tight strike zone. And Connor Nolan able to find it. Well, this is exactly what head coach Steve Holm has wanted out of his team to come in and not be in awe of the facilities and the fan base here at Arkansas. Just come in here and just do a job. That's ball four. Four straight Redbirds have reached after the first man was retired, and Matt Hobbs will pay an early visit to the mound. Seems like everything Connors is is leaving the ball up in the zone, and sometimes that's just not getting out over that front, front leg and get that chest down and just drive down to home plate. So I'm sure there's just some tweaks mechanically that he wants to – Try to get in Connor's head and say, hey, just play some catch with Michael Turner. I don't care who you are, if you're opening day, you're going to have jitters. And it uh, looks like that Connor's got a little bit of that with keeping the ball up in the zone. See Connor going to the mouth, and the sun is out, but again, Troy, it was 14 degrees this morning. It's warming up to the mid-40s. Still pretty crisp and cool outside. I think this is a big at-bat right here. Arkansas wants to get to the dugout with just only giving up one run. That's a liner right to a diving Robert Moore off the bat of Sabotnik. And that would have been two more runs had Robert Moore not been Johnny on the spot and making a fantastic diving catch. 
Boy, what a great play by Robert Moore. That ball's hit on the screws. He almost has to dive behind himself, and he tried to figure out a way to get a double play, but heads up play not to throw that ball away. Zabotnik so redshirted last year, anxious to get his first hit back, came up with the bases loaded, hit a bullet on the first pitch, but he's out. Here's Nick Guile. Guile, the seventh Redbird to hit. Connor Nola went to throw the first, and he just balked. Stovall was not holding the runner, so a free run for the Redbirds on a balk. Troy, that'd be, that's nerves right there for Connor not realizing that Stovall's not holding the runner with the bases loaded. Right, he didn't step off. If that back foot comes off the rubber before he makes that move, that's not a balk, but I'm not sure, really sure what Connor was thinking with bases loaded and two outs. I'm not sure either. Faking a throw to first base. And it also takes away a possibility of a force on a ground ball up the middle with Nick Guile batting. Hitting 206 a year ago with one home run for the Wisconsin native. Just underway and two runs in the bank for the Birds. A liner to third, speared by Caden Wallace to end a lengthy inning. Redbirds get a couple of runs on just two singles. Strange frame, we're off and rolling. The Hawks coming to bat. Happiest man on the diamond is Jordan Lussier. He's working with a two-run lead as he goes to the mound. Troy here in the bottom of the first to face the Hawks. Yeah, you're right. He's got to be happy about his offense. And you're going to see Lucier sit at upper 80s to low 90s. His breaking ball is his out pitch. He's going to go to that when he really needs to punch somebody out. He'll mix in a change as well. See his numbers from a year ago, that 4-3-6 earned run average. Here's your Razorback lineup on opening day. Peyton Stovall, the freshman, will lead off with Wallace, Borfin, Moore, and Turner, then Slavens. You see Battles batting seventh. Lanzilli, the grad transfer from Wake, batting eighth. And Gregory is in center. No web today. And Zach will bat ninth for Dave Van Horn in his 20th season as the Arkansas head coach. That's the China anniversary, Troy, in case you're curious. Okay. I'm not sure if you were able to possibly get DVH from China for his 20th year as a head coach. <laughs> I let him borrow a 22. Does that help at all? <laughs> Well, here's Peyton Stovall. How about this young man, Troy? I got to imagine the heart beats a little bit faster today. A guy who could have been a first or maybe a second round draft pick wanted to come to school and he's leading off on opening day. Yeah, he's going to be a special player. And I think just quality at bats is what you're going to see out of Peyton Stovall. I think he's normally probably going to be a second base or third baseman, but you just try to find a place to play as a freshman. He's happy to play, be at first base. Back on Sunday, had four hits, drove in four runs in a scrimmage. Seemed to be ready for the season to start. He was limited a bit in the fall with an oblique injury. He's going to chop one to the right side. Big bounce for McCaw, who retires Stovall. And there's one gone. Take a look at the defense for the Redbirds. They've made a few changes. A guy like Huggins, who's going to be in left field, was at shortstop last year. Cermak's very good in center. Nichols, young man taking over at shortstop. And Troy, a freshman catcher in Tyler Woltney was with the team last year, but this is first opportunity to be out there, and it comes at Baumwalker Stadium. Yeah, Coach Holm thinks he's going to be a really, really good catcher as he kind of matures through this program. And this is a team that fielded 965 last year, so pretty solid, not as spectacular, but they'll get the job done. Here's Caden Wallace. What an incredible spring Caden Wallace has put forth off his freshman year where he hit 14 home runs, went to the Cape, and came back and is ready for what could be, I almost hate to bring it up, his final year as a Razorback, a guy who could be draft eligible as a sophomore. And even DVH a couple of days ago said it won't be a difficult decision considering no, I, how good he expects him to be. I don't think so. I think he's going to get uh, – a big opportunity and get one early in the draft. Right on that pitch, but fouls one back from Lucier. Lucier's got a little bit of a sneaky fastball. He's kind of got that slow, deliberate motion, and it just kind of explodes out of his hand. 
Well, he's from Winnipeg. He's thinking, why is it so hot outside today at <laughs> 46? It's from Winnie. There's the big breaking ball and a slow one at that and a wave and a miss for Caden Wallace and a couple of outs. Really nice breaking ball and great spot of it. Not only is it on the outer third, but just kind of up in the zone. That is a hitter. Sometimes you almost give up on that pitch when you see it up in your eyes and then all of a sudden it just falls off the table. Jace Borfin, Oklahoma Sooner transfer in there and looks at strike one. One thing that jumps out at me, though, Troy, when you see a guy like Borfin and Stovall at the top of the lineup, how left-handed heavy this Razorback lineup is going to be. They really are. They've got guys like Braden Webb that's not playing today and Zach Gregory's a lefty, but there's a, they really shake it up on that left-hand side. There's going to be a lot of power out of this offense as well, too, the team that Led the nation home runs a season to go. I think they're going to hit as many or more this season. 109 home runs a year ago. Borfitt had just two at Oklahoma, and it was probably a little bit of a disappointing year in Norman for a young man who came with all the prospect accolades growing up in Oklahoma. Then he goes to the Cape, swinging wood against some of the best pitchers in the country, and popped five home runs. Hit one a couple of days ago in a scrimmage in which a scout was quoted in the paper as saying he hit one to Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if that new building and right is in the direction of Louisiana or maybe just the freeway, but he hit it a long way. Yeah, a really big frame, 6'2", about 200 pounds. Another soft chopping ground ball to Soberano at second. And how about that? Lucier had a perfect and efficient first inning. One inning complete, two nothing birds on opening day. Head coach of the Redbirds is Steve Holm, beginning his fourth season at Illinois State. They were awfully good a couple of years ago in 2019 when they were an at-large team in the NCAA tournament. Won a couple of games, including one at Louisville. Guy had a lot of time in minor league baseball as well. And there is Dave Van Horn, his 20th season. Hardly see DVH <laughs> coming out of the shadows of that dugout. DVH says he likes the dugout on the first base side. He said it's longer than the one on the third base side. Don't, don't know how that happened. <laughs> but he also said you better watch your head if you're in the dugout. The, he said the ceiling's lower. Yeah, that's no good. You don't want to knock yourself out. Here's Greg Nichols. Shortstop out of Sacramento City College. In fact, he's from the same hometown in California as his head coach, Steve Holm. He's the only switch hitter on this team, and they're batting lefty against Connor Nolan, who gave up a couple of runs on a pair of singles, a hit batter, a walk, and a balk, and a very busy top of the first inning. Yeah, Connor Nolan needs a really easy inning right here. Maybe not a lot of pitches. Just kind of cruise through this when you get Arkansas back to the dugout. Would help. He lands that pitch for a strike. Unfortunately, our radar gun does not seem to be calibrated or working yet today. A little bit of work and a lot of construction done on this site over the offseason. We were scrambling just to figure out our booth as well. <laughs> Wires and equipment and Everything we could. Screens could, yeah. in the wrong place. It didn't fit. It was all it kinds was of fun stuff. Strange beginning, but we're off and uh, ready for action. Here's a payoff. There's a wave and a miss. Not sure if that was the cutter there, but Nichols waves and misses. Let's see the defense behind Connor Nolan because, again, it's going to look different, especially that outfield. Remember, no Christian Franklin, forfeit and left. Gregory's not a true center fielder. That's something to watch. And Slavens, of course, last year was at first. You see Wallace battles more and stove all around the diamond. New catcher as well, Troy. I'm anxious to see Michael Turner, the Kent State product, who's a, a good one. He really is. I got to see him in the fall and early spring. And I think the, the pitchers really like to throw to Turner. He's a really good hitter and just brings so much experience to that position. And that's what you got to love. When you lose a guy like Casey Opitz and just all that Casey Opitz did for this, this team, it's really nice to be able to throw in a senior behind the dish. I would agree. And our apologies to Casey Opitz for waiting this long to mention his name because it does look a lot different without him behind the plate. 
is. Tyler Wolpman waves and misses. We just got used to seeing Casey not just behind the dish the last few years. He was there just about every single game. Yeah, he, he was a warrior behind the plate. I mean, he had some rubber band legs. That's a wave and a miss. Turner has to gather that one in. Flip to Stovall for the strikeout. So Connor Nolan a couple of Ks here in the second. Well, Nolan went to the off-speed pitch against the freshman, and he could not figure it out. Woltman just did not pick up the spin on that ball. Nice job by Turner just not trying to catch it, just block it and keep it in front. Talk more about Turner as this series unfolds. Back to the top of the lineup, Soberano. Bounced out to Robert Moore to begin the game. He wins the early prize for the best sunglasses, doesn't he? He's definitely got the style That's going. He got the elbow pad, the shades, eye black. Does he need that much eye black if he's got those big glasses on? It looks good, though, Brent. Oh, it looks great. I mean, that's big league right there. Got the glisten, the sun coming off the helmet and the glasses. Almost reminds you of Colton Wong a little <laughs> bit, doesn't he? Yes, it does, especially with that uniform color. Here's the 2-0 pitch, and that's lined in the left, and that's a base hit. So the third hit all singles for the Redbirds, and it keeps Connor from having a perfect second inning. Always feels good to get that first hit out of the way on opening day, doesn't it? Boy, it really does. And, again, real impressive with the approach that these Illinois State Redbird hitters have taken against Nolan. Nobody's really trying to muscle up, not trying to hit it 400 feet, just really just going the pitch and keeping the hands inside the baseball. So here's Aiden Huggins, hit by a pitch on that elbow guard in the first and scored one of the two runs. You talked about Connor needing a quick inning and certainly building towards bigger and better things. Troy, when you think back to last year, it's hard not to think of Cops. Of course, he kind of shouldered the burden, both closing games, middle relief, and even starting that final contest. But Arkansas's top five pitchers by innings are all gone. There's a bouncer to second base. Moore will make the play. I liked your thought on that, Troy. Well, we'll come back to that a little bit later on. Man left on base, hitting and a half complete, 2 nothing. I assume. Monday night, the next SEC inside Grant you an all-access pass to the number two Auburn Tigers basketball program. Special time of 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 Central. Then it's a look at the Georgia Lady Bulldogs women's team. You'll get never before seen footage and sound from players and coaches, a real behind the scenes look. Only on the SEC Network and ESPN app. It's college baseball season though today, opening day, the Hawks trailing 2-0 to Illinois State. Robert Moore, Michael Turner, and Brady Slavens in the second against Jordan Lucier. Here is Moore. Robert led this team in home runs a year ago with 16, batting cleanup today. Did he check? No, he did not, says Keith Sanders at third. Uh, Troy, one area, though, that Robert wants to improve upon, and there's his numbers, and, of course, those look very good. He hit 203 right-handed. He hit 325 left-handed. And while he's batting lefty today, I think he wants to take – even more strides batting righty in a year that he is certainly draft eligible and maybe a first round pick. Yeah, I think so. And a, and a lot, lot more power from the left hand side as well. So not only average, but power really drops off when he flips over to the right hand side. We sat down with a lot of these players a few weeks ago doing some interviews before the campaign and you know, most guys we talk to for nine or ten minutes, I look up, we're 20 minutes deep with Robert, and I'm like, I could keep going forever because, you know, after a while, I told him it's almost as if I'm listening to his dad. I mean, it's, it's like a 40-year-old baseball veteran rather than a 19-year-old, a 20-year-old because of his outlook on the game, his understanding, his comprehension. I think he just gets a you know, very high baseball IQ is what the term they like to use. He definitely has that. Two balls, two strikes. Fouls one back. We'll talk a lot about the prospect rankings and again, what could be ahead for Robert. He played for the USA Collegiate National Team last year after the season ended. He's going to look at strike three. Lucier dropped in that slow breaking ball and gets another strikeout. 
really froze Robert Moore on that last pitch. And again, I think it's when it comes out of his hand, it's so high. As a hitter, you, you just think that there's no way that ball is going to be a strike, and you just give up on it. That thing has to stop for refueling because it <laughs> almost just drags a bit through the air before it lands around his knees, Robert Moore. A little gravity helping now. Sure did. Well, here's Michael Turner, Kent State product. Last year he dealt with a hamstring issue, and that's why he only had 25 games. The Ohio native did have six home runs, hit 337 for the Golden Flashes. One of those guys who a couple of years ago could have easily been drafted in what was that crazy COVID year. The draft was altered and then came back, of course, for 21. Here he finds himself still playing college baseball in 2022, but thrilled to be here. When Kent State passed through his freshman year way back when, Troy, he was on the team. He only got in, I think, late for defensive purposes. But playing at Baumwalker Stadium, even that far back, made an impact. And he's been spending all offseason wondering what is it going to be like. And here he is opening day, and there's 9,000, 10,000 fans here on a 46-degree February afternoon. Yeah, I'm sure that's a little bit different than Kent State's opening day, and I think that ball hit him. Well, that's the first base runner. It comes on a hit-by-pitch. Just got that elbow guard of Turner. I love a comment that Dave Van Horde said about my, Michael Turner. He said, I'm just shocked that he's still playing college baseball. See, there's that slow, big bender coming in, and Turner, you, know, you don't have to make an attempt to get out of the way. You just can't lean into that ball. So he just almost kind of rolled away just slightly and an easy hit by pitch. We saw that pitch drop so late to Moore, and it just refused to move. It refused to buckle, and it hit Turner. Here's Brady Slavens. Brady was not 100% at the end of last year and not happy with that first pitch. One pitch into his season, he's irritated with our plate up fire. <laughs> Are you surprised he's batting six hole today, Troy? A little bit, you know, but Brady's got a lot of pop and, you know, the wind is blowing kind of from the right field foul pole to the left field foul pole, but Slavin's got the power to hit it through any wind. This guy was fourth in the conference last year in RBIs. He takes a big rip and a miss. We mentioned that ankle and of course we remember the awful injury at Hoover when we and he thought it was broken. And fortunately for Slavens, it was not. But, you know, he didn't play for a while after that. And all of a sudden, then he's taken one round of BP. They're putting him in the lineup in the Super Regional and saying, go get him. His timing wasn't quite right, as you could imagine. He felt like he was just hitting on one leg no at doubt. that point. Yep. He fouls that one back and out of play. He said it took a couple of months, Troy, going home. He didn't play in the summer. Went back to Kansas. It was a couple of months before he really felt right. Oh, I'm sure. And, you know, that was a big, big loss for Arkansas, even though he did come back. But just that extra big bat in the lineup. And, again, he, he had some really clutch hits throughout the 2021 season. I wouldn't be surprised if he couldn't hit 18 to 20 home runs this season. Oh, my goodness. He smokes one that's going to end up in left field in front of Huggins. It hit Lucier, and let's hope that young man is okay. That was a rocket off the bat of Slavens. Boy, and you can see Slavens' reaction. He's got his hands on his head, and as a hitter, you just, you're just you just sick about it. Did it get him on the shoulder, Troy, or did it hit him someplace else? I'm not sure if that got him – almost like it got him off of the head, which – I mean, that ball almost that. was caught in left field by Huggins. An absolute rocket off the bat of Slavens that hit Jordan Lucier. Wow. That's a really, really good sign that at least he's got up to his feet. Might be a little bit of shell shock, and you can imagine why. Might have to see this one again just to see where this made contact with the pitcher. Boy, it got him on the side of the head, didn't it? I think it did hit him in the head. I just don't think, it, I, I, I just don't think it ricochets off his shoulder that far. I mean, that's one tough kid. The first hit he allowed was off the side of his head. He's done. Yeah. And I, I think that's the right decision. I, I do too. 
He threw a one pitch, and you could tell. I got to believe he, that head's ringing. And the fans here at Bomb Walker give him a nice ovation, but you have to err on the side of caution when a line drive that hard is hit off Jordan Lucier. So his start. After a perfect first inning, retired the first four he faced a little bit shorter than he would have imagined. Let's hope that young man's okay. We're going to have a lengthy delay after Lucier took that line drive off the side of his head and then walked off towards the dugout. But, Troy, let's talk about the new facility. I know there's a lot of excitement and interest in this $27 million building. It's just absolutely unbelievable. And you, you think about where the Razorback program has come from in this. You, you see some pictures of uh, the fairgrounds. They're playing in almost like a cow pasture. And then you've got a facility like this. And oh, yeah, this doesn't even include the, you know, the indoor hitting facility that's right behind us, the, the Fowler Center, that's another $9 million facility. There you see the pitching lab and all the electronics. There's the locker room. and. You know, there's no there's no chairs. All the seats have benches in front of them. There's air flowing behind everybody's locker. I mean, it is first class from top to the bottom. I know Coach Van Horn talks about it being, he goes, this is a power five football facility at the Razorback baseball field. Well, you, you saw the locker room, and I didn't see the ping pong table. Apparently, there's, there's quite a competition that goes on there. And certainly, the weight room is incredible. Even just walking through that in the mornings a lot of days, Troy, you see so many of the alumni you know there's Blaine Knight uh, there's Jalen Beeks and you just have the alumni that uh, have been here over the last four or five years if not longer able to come back and work the other day I walked in the Fowler there was Dominic Fletcher and Christian Franklin working out and there is a pro locker room in that facility too two nothing Illinois State Redbirds got a pair of runs in the first inning on a single and a balk Razorbacks did not have a hit until Brady Slavens knocked one that I'm not sure what the exit velo was, probably triple digits off of Jordan Lucier, the side of his head. So Colin Wyman has been warming up extensively to try and get ready. He's a fifth year senior, a transfer from Navarro College. He's in his third year at Illinois State. Last year he did have 45 innings, two of those were starts. Had a couple of outings of Five scoreless innings or more, and I believe that's Lucier there. And you know, again, Troy, our thoughts are with him. I'm hoping he's okay. I got to believe that is uh, something as a pitcher you hope you never have to deal with. I mean, it's scary enough throwing batting practice and throwing behind an L screen. You just want to make sure you get behind it. But you're absolutely right. That is such a scary thing. And again, just what a gutsy kid. And and again, your, our thoughts and prayers are with him and his family on that. Here's Jalen Battles. Probably at the end of last year, the way Jalen finished the season as the MVP of the SEC tournament and such, we did not expect to see him back either. Battles returning. He's wearing a new number. His old number two it used to be DVH's number two. And now it belongs to Battles. And the one thing, though, about Jalen, though, he had that. Uh, issue in the surgery that kept him from being able to play or throw a baseball in the fall. Yeah, hurt that non-throwing shoulder in the summer and just had to walk around in a sling. And to pop that one up, Wolfman doing crop circles behind the plate. It's not that windy of a day, but he needed to navigate a lot of area. And how about the tagging up of Michael Turner to advance to third and a pop up behind the plate. It really heads up play by Michael Turner. The third baseman was thinking he might have to go down there and make that play. Watch the ball go up. Here comes the third baseman. Waltman does a good job to stay with that baseball. And Turner hit the whole time. He's thinking, I'm tagging, I'm going. He just kind of puts it into cruise control. All right, Troy, somebody needs to be a third. Who would that be? Would that be the shortstop Nichols or maybe even Huggins from left on a play like that? I, I almost think that the, the shortstop's got to rotate over. That's a long ways to go for the left fielder to come in there. Because the second baseman, he didn't have anywhere to go. He could have covered second. First razor back at bat for Chris Lanzilli. Wake Forest product. Another guy, had it not been for a crazy COVID year, may have been on to the professional ranks. Finds himself here in his last season. 
at Wake in four years, he hit 42 home runs. By the way, that is third most of any active player in college baseball. Heading the count here, 2-0. Got to sit beside Matt Hobbs, a pitching coach who recruited Chris Lanzilli to Wake Forest, and he said, so this kid's got concrete in his bat, Brett. So he said he hits the ball hard almost every time. Pitch is called a strike. I know there was the thought, and DVH mentioned this when he first got here. He might have been walking on eggshells for the first few weeks, but he said, you know, he says you come in as a newcomer. You're five years in, you see other people at your positions that are all really good. <laughs> you realize, you know, you still have to earn and compete for a position, even though, as I mentioned, he's accomplished a lot during his time in the ACC. Absolutely, and Lanzilli was a third-team All-American last season. So he's got a lot of accolades and came up here with a lot of high expectations. See if he jumps out of his shoes if he gets a fastball on a 3-1 pitch. Down and in ball four, and the Razorbacks have loaded him up with two outs. I would say there would be some teams where if you get to the bottom of the lineup, you would not be facing a guy like Lanzilli batting eight. Or Wyman might think, hey, it's nine hole as the Beer Hats come out for the first time this season. But Zach Gregory is a pest. And not just for what he can do with the bat, Troy. This was a guy that was hit by a pitch 11 times last year to go along with 26 walks. Yeah, Gregory's just one of those guys who just finds a way to get on base. And not only does he get hit by pitches and walks, but he's a good hitter too. So he really shrinks that strike zone down and has makes those pitchers work. And I think that it puts a lot of pressure on him because, again, that strike zone is not very big. But if you throw it in there, he's going to hammer it say with this team and again the way they swing for the fences you might be looking to do some serious damage here I'll be curious to see if Gregory takes another pitch trying to work Wyman into a bigger disadvantage count my thought process as a hitter was always if I get something I like I'm going after it I don't like to miss maybe the one the best pitch you're going to see in a, at that at bat I would agree, but part of that, I think, Troy, if you're in swing mode right there, you probably swing at that pitch. It's a fastball, even though it's off the plate. He was in a, a more patient approach, so he was willing to take that and really put Wyman in a bit of a bond. I think, I think that's Gregory's M.O. all the time, is just you know, he'll, he'll hammer it if it's in right where he wants it to be. I might argue, though, going back to that previous 1-0 pitch, if Slavens gets that or a few other guys, they're coming out of their Absolutely. shoes. Absolutely. I, I totally agree. Like, that's the big thing that Dave Van Horn and, and uh, Nate Thompson really wanted this team to work on this year is deeper at-bats, better quality at-bats, and, and really work that, I think, especially in conference play, work that uh, strikes on a little bit more. How about that 3-0 pitch for a strike? It's going to be interesting to see Gregory's approach right here. Again, he's not afraid to hit with two strikes, which makes him even more dangerous. Base is full of Razorbacks. Well, he fluttered that one in there for a strike. Is that a changeup? Maybe he just took just a little something off the yeah. fastball. Or maybe he just kind of guided in a fastball. Everybody's going to get a head start and. Defensively, Illinois State's playing deep, so each base runner is going to get a huge lead. From 3 and 0 to 3 and 2, the runners go and we'll do it again. Took 6 pitches before Gregory swung the bat. Well, this Illinois State outfield is playing very shallow for Zach Gregory. I think they're kind of looking at his size in nine hole, and they think, okay, he doesn't have much pop, but look how shallow their outfield is playing. He's got a chance to put one over them. Another payoff. And again, a foul ball right back to the screen. Good job by Wyman. A couple clutch pitches with full count. 
Making Gregory work at it. And four straight strikes to Zach. I wasn't surprised that Gregory was in the opening day lineup. I was surprised that Braden Webb was not. Not quite 100% with a quad injury. All left-handed batting outfielders. Gregory batting ninth. And that one's hit a mile in the air to right. Sabotnik not real comfortable. This isn't exactly an easy play. And finally, wisely, Cermak, the best defensive member of that trio, makes the play. And the Razorbacks leave them loaded. They stranded three. We go to the third. Well, the Redbirds from Illinois State, a 2-0 lead through two innings. The Bloomington, Illinois. Four NCAA tournament appearances, including a few years ago as an at-large. A couple of conference tournament titles. And their notable alum, Paul DeYoung, the shortstop for the St. Louis Cardinals. Pretty good conference in the MVC. We'll touch on where the Redbirds sit as far as some of the preseason picks. As they bat with the heart of their lineup in this third inning, Ryan Cermak. And singled and scored, leading off. Lines one on one hard bounce right by Robert Moore. And don't look now, Cermak. He's two for two. He's going to try for two, and he is going to be out. He went by the base. I think he had it initially. And his momentum just carried him on that dirt right by second and battles with a smile on his face, applied the tag. I love how aggressive Cermak is. First of all, he just hits an absolute dart past Connor Nolan and really a lot of top spin that ball kind of bounced over Robert Moore's glove and Gregory just kind of flips it in there. And again, Battles kind of gives up on it and then he's looking at the umpire and all of a sudden he comes back. Watch him look at the umpire right here and he's like, hey, I have the ball and he realizes, hey, he's not on the base. Did you see Connor Nolan's reaction in that last replay? <laughs> he's jumping up and down saying, tag him. Redbirds lose a runner to begin this third inning. Here's McCaw. He singled in a run in the first. If Cermak keeps swinging the bat like that all season long, again, he's going to get a, a big opportunity to play professional baseball. Well, that's a swing and a miss, so Turner has to track down the ball halfway to the dugout and throw out McCaw at first. McCaw was looking at the third base umpire, Keith Sanders, hoping he wouldn't ring him up. Didn't take off immediately. I think he thought, well, I'm just going to try to sell a check swing right there. And you see the home plate umpire, Mark Wagers, kind of Ooh. point down to third. Well, I thought he checked it. I did too, now that I see that angle. That's why he didn't run. You know, thinking, I don't blame him, right? I didn't, I didn't hey, check it. He shut up, close you to TV swing. guys. I didn't swing. <laughs> That irritates a hitter, too. Ah, yeah, I tell you, you, you know you didn't even offer at it, and you get rung up. Three strikeouts for Nolan. Here's Flores. He walk back in the first. Fans downstairs a little bit restless now, wanting a strike on that pitch. They've had a long time to get ready to heckle this offseason. It's hard to get a ticket anymore to Baumwalker Stadium, the way the Season tickets were reconfigured. The fans out here early, and, and, and what a big weekend it is with men's basketball tomorrow against Tennessee. Baseball starts at noon. Softball going on all weekend. Women's basketball on Sunday. There may be four other sports playing, too. I think there's a I, track meet going on oh, over here, there too. Is. There is. As a matter of fact, there is. There's a chopper foul, swimming. I, 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 my brain only occupies a certain amount. But how about those fans out there in the hog pen? No doubt that thing's loaded right out of the gates. It's almost happy hour time too, isn't it? I think it's already started. Got the bases loaded landing. There's there's some not bad consumption too. going on up there. I like it. A little low on sunshine, but I like the consumption part. Flores chops that one foul up the third base side, fielded by Wallace. Got a feeling that hog pen though is gonna be uh, jam packed these next two days. Yeah, it gets up to 60 degrees uh, Saturday and Sunday, and I think that with the sun out, it's going to be a really nice uh, 
seat to have out there. I think I'd have to grill today just to create some fight. <laughs> <laughs> and a 2-2, that's strike three. A couple of strikeouts for Connor Nolan after he struck out two an inning ago, so maybe he's settling in. Razorbacks need to get their bats going. Nothing Redbird lead us. We go to the bottom of the third inning. Remember March 3rd, 2020? It was a simpler time. There was peace and tranquility in the world, except the Redbirds came here and in nearly a four hour game took down the Hawks eight to seven. It was a big win for Illinois State and Arkansas had 15 hits in that game, Troy. You might remember Casey Martin had four. Everybody was saying, what's wrong with Casey Martin? He had four hits that day. Franklin had three, Moore had two. Kerstad had two, but Arkansas left a boatload of runners on base, and they left them loaded last inning. Yeah, I think so. They just need to get the big hit. And again, you know, credit to the Redbird pitching. You know, they've made pitches when they needed to, and Arkansas is just going to have to be a little more patient at the plate. Could I interest you in 364 combined pitches today as we had in that game? Oh, wow. That's a marathon. <laughs> that that was, is a marathon. That was plenty. Here's Peyton Stovall. He chopped out to first. It is first collegiate at bat. Would you want to go back to March 3rd, 2020 and just start these last two years all over Absolutely. again? Absolutely. Bring it on. Yeah, I might I might take you up on that too. We'd all be younger and uh, maybe a little quieter. There's a roller to second. Soberano's got it. And throws out Stovall to begin the hog third inning. We didn't even know the legend of Kevin Copps back in March of 2020. We didn't even know what was coming in regards to what Kevin did last year. It, it, it was. It was just comical when he would come up and you watch teams try to – I mean, teams did everything against Kevin. They tried to swing at the first pitch. They tried to take till they got two strikes, and it really didn't matter. There's Caden Wallace. Going to bounce one to third. A lot of soft contact. Giles – Throw a little bit high, but uh, McCaw brought it down. Two outs. Now, Kevin pitched in 20 SEC games last year. 20 times he pitched against SEC competition. Arkansas went 19 and 1. <laughs> that stretch. They led the country in earned run average. Arkansas had the top two pitchers. I feel bad for Patrick Wicklander because we talk about cops being gone. Well, Arkansas had pitchers that were 1 and 2 in the league in ERA, and Wicklander was 2. He was just 2 to his own teammate. Yeah, he kind of got overshadowed and then some and had an outstanding year. Here's Borfin, who bounced out to second, his only time in. Boy, he spreads out wide in that batter's box, too. Some people talk about Borfin to having a little resemblance of Heston Kirst had maybe a hair shorter, but definitely has some pop like Kirst had had. Not quite the same high leg kick. Tell you what, though, it might be fun for him just to be batting right behind a guy in Caden Wallace that he's known since they were 12 years old. They were playing on a Banditos team way back when, and now they're batting second and third in this lineup together. As Arkansas recruited Borfin heavily for years out of Oklahoma as he fouls one back. But Borfin had a brother, I think it was Braxton, who played at Oklahoma, had a father that played at Oklahoma. It was really the family lineage. Sometimes it just gets in your blood. And yep. But he felt like he wanted to come to Arkansas and hasn't looked back. Going to roll one to the right side. Soberano almost overran that baseball before he backhanded it, threw out Borfin. That's three soft outs on the ground for the Hawks. Just one Razorback hit through three innings today. Two nothing birds. Hey, it's not just opening day. It's also beginning the 100th season of Arkansas baseball program founded way back in 1897. It played until 1930. Then there was a hiatus until 1947. And this year is the 76th consecutive season. Of course, the 10 College World Series appearances. I got a feeling that major leaguers number of 54 will be at 60 in a blink of an eye. Yes, I I'm think it will too. Connor Nolan 
given up a couple of singles but struck out four in the last two scoreless innings. Both of those runs against him came in the first as he's facing Sabotnik, who lined out with the bases loaded in the first inning. His first college at bat after he redshirted last year, and they are high on this young man. He hit the weight room last year, got bigger and stronger and better. Bounces one by Wallace, fielded by Battles. Jalen will make the play, one out. That's a much more difficult play than you think it is with the third baseman, Wallace, cutting in front of Battles. I mean, that's what Wallace is supposed to do, but to not lose the lack of concentration. Watch, watch Wallace. He's really going to try to get to this baseball. He just can't get there, and, and for Battles to kind of lose the vision of that ball and not miss a beat, that's special. Troy, the soft contact, though, today on ground balls, it feels like the very first scrimmage of the year when the coaches roll you out there and you're like, I haven't swung the bat in two months. We know that's not the case. We're seeing a lot of balls topped and chopped and rolled slowly to infielders. I think so. And then if you kind of wind back to the first inning, there's a couple really hard hit balls by the Redbirds, and they could have had a huge inning on the bullet to Robert Moore and then another one to Caden Wallace. So, Arkansas is probably feeling pretty lucky right now, only being down by two. Dial the battery line to third, right to Caden Wallace. His only time in. Another fifth-year senior who started way back when at Creighton. He went from a Blue Jay to a Red Bird with a stop <laughs> in between. At Madison College. Tachuco All-American there back in 2019. 111 RBIs. Is that possible in a JUCO season? That's incredible. Sounds like a career in the JUCO ranks. Two years. Gal really leans back before he gets ready and lifts one out to right, traveling to Slavens. Brady needs a play. He'll make the catch. Might be some crunchy grass out there. That field has been a bit frozen where the sun quite can't reach in these uh, January and February days. Yeah, they had the shovels and the wheelbarrows and big blowers out there trying to first get the ice off and then dry out that warning track. And That's one thing about that new building. It blocks the sun. Yes. And so there's a, there's a lot of wet, cold ground out there in right field. I hope is... Nichols rolls one foul. You can do a little presentation on the axis of the sun at some point <laughs> later on in this, this opening month. But, you know, they got a brand new tarp. But the new tarp was on the infield yesterday. And then they had the old tarp split in two, which was out there where Slavens was standing and some of the shadows. And, Troy, the only thing worse than pulling one tarp in the morning, pulling three. Yeah, that's, that's rough. I, I can remember back in the day but, that you uh, got many a phone call about having to remove the tarp off the field and, that's before cell phones, and so yeah, they called it the, the, the tarp tree, the phone tree to get the tarp yeah. off the oh, field. Oh, yeah, that and was a good one. Boy, you better show up. <laughs> Norm would let you know about it if you didn't. Oh, I bet. One and one to Greg Nichols. There must have been eight different vehicles. Every Gator and backhoe that this university owned was parked on top of that auxiliary tarp in right field yesterday. We're trying to get a little wind to that field that of course frozen over for a while. Arkansas really appreciated that indoor when they had about almost a week where they weren't able to get on the field. With, was it Landon, the winter storm? I lose track anymore. Yeah, pick a name, any name. There's just too yeah, many of them. It, three balls and a strike. And Connor Nolan will walk Greg Nichols. Second walk. For Nolan. Talked earlier, though, about Arkansas last season, and we mentioned Wicklander and Cops, but the five pitchers who threw the most innings last year for the Razorbacks, none are back. And then you mix in a guy like Peyton Paulette, who could have been a Friday or Saturday starter, or certainly a starter, and a very high draft pick come June or July, had to have Tommy John surgery recently. So really that's, I would say, the six guys that you relied on last year for innings that aren't available this season. So it's a land of opportunity. Yeah, I really think so. There, there's a lot of talent uh, on this Razorback pitching staff. and I think Matt Hobbs is excited about who he's got. But 
there's some guys that are going to have to go out there and prove themselves, and one tomorrow is a true freshman in Hagen Smith. He'll be on the hill for that noon start in game two of the series. Says Nolan finds the strike zone to Tyler Wolfman, the catcher batting ninth. He struck at his only previous at bat. Redbirds a pair of runs in the top of the first, and that's it. Falls in for strike two. Can you put in a request to get our radar gun back working on that scoreboard? Let me see what I can do on that. Uh, yeah, I, I really missed that. I almost like it more for the off-speed pitches just right. to kind of see what's uh, – and that's what pitching coaches use the, the radar gun for, almost more for breaking stuff. When it, when it, how does it bite the most? I would agree. Especially with a guy like Nolan who throws five pitches, right? I mean, there might be a couple of out, miles an hour difference between one or another. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure he's really liking that cutter. I think he's gone to it several times today. He really likes the curveball when he needs a strike. Left that one just a little bit elevated. Nolan wanted that one. He did. <laughs> he did. I think Walton gave up on that one a little too early. Those shadows are starting to advance out past home plate. It may not be delightful to try and pick up the spin of the baseball for the next hour or so. 2-2 two -two is chopped down at the plate. That one might have got a little piece of Turner, the catcher, right there. Kind of shook out that right arm a little bit. Might have caught him in the shoulder. This crowd has been subdued today. The Redbirds took the uh, Hog faithful out of this one. A couple of runs in the top of the first. They've had four hits to Arkansas's one. And Waltman hanging tough. Nice hat bat by the true freshman. Excuse me, a redshirt freshman. Yeah, first college game. Wheaton, Illinois native. Redshirted a year ago and also had an ACL injury that he was rehabbing from. 5-9 catcher, first college game. That's nasty. Strike three call. Nolan able to break one off and get the K to end the inning, Troy. Like that might be the spark that Arkansas needs. A big strikeout by Nolan. Almost the same pitch was called a ball, but maybe it's a momentum shift for Arkansas. The man in the hoodie is Jordan Lucier. He retired the first four hogs he faced. Hit Michael Turner, and then Troy, this took place off the bat of Brady Slavens. Yeah, just an absolute rocket, and it hits him in the side of the head. And, and ricochets all the way out to the left field, and it was almost caught by the left fielder. That's how ball, far that ball traveled. And, and again, it's good to see him. You know, seems like it's he's okay, but yes. golly, I mean, what a scary situation. We heard it was 103 miles an hour off the bat of Brady Slavitz. We thought it was triple digits. When yeah, you're right. You just don't have time to move or react. And by the way, that is the only Razorback hit all game as Moore leads off this fourth inning. Colin Wyman came in, got the final two outs in that second inning, stranded a couple of runners, had a perfect third inning where he had three soft ground ball outs from the Hogs. Moore struck out looking his only time in. Another soft ground ball. Troy, is this a variation of speeds right now? Maybe not seeing the same type of velo they saw over the last week or so? Yeah, I think so. I think the Arkansas hitters maybe are a little, little amped up. It's, it's opening day, and, and I think you're right. I think velocity probably has a little bit of something to do with it. And got to give credit to Lucy why he was in there and, and, and Colin Wyman now just being able to hit their spots and mix, mix up the speeds. There's Michael Turner hit by a pitch back in the second. It's an Illinois State team that a couple of years ago, in addition to taking down Arkansas, they've won a game at Vanderbilt, won a game at Louisville. It's a late swing and a foul ball off to the left by Turner. Again, really good job by Wyman right here, getting ahead of Turner 0-2. 
They've made it look pretty easy and efficient to this point to have the two hurlers for the Redbirds. That one not close from Wyman. I was reading something from Greg Maddox, and you know, who's a Hall of Famer, and he said, you know, I didn't like to waste a pitch on 0-2. He said, that's when the hitter's the most vulnerable. I'm going to go, go after him and get him. I would say right now, with the shadows and the sunshine, you might be able to put a ball maybe a little bit off the corner or inside and try and get a call, and Turner is rung up. Got a pained expression on his face as he took strike three. Pretty good job of framing that by Waltman. Yeah, I think so. I think Waltman might have stole a strike right there. And mm, Turner says, didn't like it. No. You know he's going to have a conversation with Mark Wagers and come back and say, hey, I want that same call when I'm catching. Brady Slavens. And he pops one up third base side, and it'll be able to play. A supposing third baseman will like this new configuration. They're going to get a little bit of help now from their own dugout. Yeah, I think so. Not a lot of foul ground here at Baumwalker Stadium. I'll tell you what, Brady Slavens is a guy that does not get cheated at the plate. He has that lone hit. I mentioned that ankle injury in the SEC tournament. After that, he went two for 18, had nine strikeouts. He caged six times and seven at bats against Nebraska. And he went from hitting 300 in the conference tournament to finishing at 284. Off his hands, that's a fair ball. Didn't hit the base. McCall will make the play. That is five ground ball outs in the last two innings for the Razorbacks. None hit hard. Four innings complete. It's all Redbirds. It's 2-0 Redbirds. There might be a pitcher out there in the bullpen by the name of Trey Krause. And if he gets in this weekend, it would be quite the story. This is a tweet from his head coach, Steve Holm. This was a young man who came down with cancer early in his time there in Illinois State. You see the cane that he's using in that left uh, hand. It was something called Ewing's sarcoma. If you really want a, a gut check, go drop a Google on Ewing's sarcoma. But a young man who came in on the cane and then was able to throw a bullpen for the first time since January of 2020 this past fall. See a little different body type uh, working back to get in shape. And uh, Troy, this is some type of story for a young man because the survival rate of that type of cancer is less than 50%. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And we had a long conversation which, with Coach Holm yesterday. And it was, it was you know, he almost teared up just even telling the story about about that player and he just was it's just an amazing story and if he can come back and be successful that's that's just huge so fans if you're coming out the next two days and you want to pick a red bird to root for that might be yeah one. You absolutely know, uh, a guy that coach Holm kept writing his name on the lineup card even when he wasn't with the team just to kind of a reminder for his guys so Barano, the leadoff hitter singled back in the second mom and dad had to come down from Wisconsin to be there when the MRI results were read to him. And, and Troy just started when he was just not quite running right. He just felt like there was something wrong with his leg during some of the drills and conditioning. Right. It just kept aggravating him. And they said, that's just not quite right. And I think that the coaching staff thought, well, if it's a stress fracture, we need to get him off of it. And that's what they were thinking. And then, then the results came back. And, and that just kind of you know puts a pit in your stomach. I guess baseball is no different than the real world, but it shows you how important trainers and doctors are when they can come up with something or you know maybe by an early diagnosis help save a young man's life. A hundred percent. You know this is just a guy that's just been touched by the Lord, and then we just hope that everything keeps going well for him. Another little dribbler foul as Nolan goes racing over just in case. Third time today that Soberano has stepped into the box. You always got to look, love looking at some of the quick information. You know, this is Soberano. He's a guy that has a black belt in karate, so I don't yeah. think anybody on the team is going to be messing with him, <laughs> even though he's not the biggest guy on the team. 
Big chopper towards Moore. Watch Robert charge to get that on a belt high bounce and throw out the speedy Soberano for the second time today. I just love how Robert Moore gets himself into the right position. You, you mentioned how hard he charged after that baseball. and You always want to get the ball when you're an infielder on a big hop. And you read that hop and he goes, okay, I know I got to put a little jets on it to get there when that before we get that second hop and it makes that play 100 times easier. Yeah, it's something he works on every single day, taking every possible throw as Aiden Huggins will look at a strike. He just doesn't go down the line to warm up with a teammate. He puts his teammate at first base. He takes every possible throw at second. Then he goes to short and does the same thing. Then he puts his throwing partner at third base. He goes out to right field like he's a cutoff man just to keep making those plays. Battles had that nearly scored out of his glove, but he makes the play on the right side of second and throws out Huggins for out number two. That's why big league scouts really love Jalen Battles. Just tremendous range. He's got a cannon for an arm. He doesn't show it off very often, but you're right, that ball almost kind of probably caught him in the palm of the hand, almost squirted out that mitt. What have you seen out of Connor Nolan since that first inning when he had the the balk and the hit batter on the walk that produced a couple of runs? I think you just go back to his experience. He, he's really settled in. He's not, you know, he's keeping the game close for Arkansas, even though they have not swung the bat very well at all. But keeping Arkansas in this ball game, and that's what you want out of a veteran. This is a fun at bat here with Cermak because Cermak has two of the four hits for the Redbirds. A couple of singles. He scored a run. Facing Connor for the third time. This will be his. 70th pitch of the game. He gets another base hit. Talk about this young man, and Coach Holmes said he's going to be a big leaguer. And you get excited to see an opposing player with that type of plotitudes coming in, and my goodness, he's looked good today. Boy, just a really short, quick stroke. And, and again, a guy that just, it just makes it look effortless. Nolan up to 70 pitches. Arkansas has got some action down in the bullpen. Yeah, 75 is a pretty good number when it comes to making that first start. And he's heading in that direction. McCaw singled in a run in the first inning. He has the only RBI in this game. Remember the second Redbird run scored on a balk with the bases loaded. That run could be really big if Arkansas can't get the offense going. Three months from now, if we pull Connor aside and we say, Connor, that balk on opening day is going to just <laughs> drop his shoulders and say, yeah, yeah, that one, that one. Again, that shadow about halfway out between home and the pitcher's mound. That's what makes it really tough. It goes from the sunlight to darkness. And again, you lose the spin on the baseball. I would think right now we can hardly see McCaw in that shot. And that's the bright sunshine, no clouds today. And again, you can give us your presentation on the <laughs> axis and the sun's rotation and I'll, the Earth's I'll work rotation. That up. I'll work that up tonight. Yeah, you get, you get to that get tomorrow. To get a PowerPoint. Uh, but I would say it's not easy right now. Yeah, you're right. It's Even fastballs are hard to pick up because, again, when it changes from the, the sunlight to the shadow, it almost disappears on the hitter. You just want that shadow to overtake the mound and just kind of engulf the pitcher. I'm not sure if I'm Peyton Stovall. I want any picks at first either. I'm trying to pick up that ball coming out of the sunshine. Nolan trying to work through five innings. Really good job by Turner right there. That was a pitch it was way down and in and he had to spear that baseball to keep it going from the backstop and you want to keep Cermak at first base you definitely don't want him in scoring position Cermak had just three stolen bases a year ago but Nolan concerned with him it's really a Redbird team that just did not run much last season. I thought the Hawks didn't run much. Redbirds ran even fewer times than Arkansas did last season. I didn't know if that's even possible. I didn't either. Big chopper to second. Moore was playing back in the grass. Has a little bit of time, though, to throw out McCaw. And in the fifth. So Connor Nolan is really finished strong. Should that be it? Arkansas, though, trailing to zip.
That's a rather quiet line score for the Razorbacks. Just one day sit through four scoreless innings. Let's go back to the first. The Redbirds got a pair of runs. And this was the base hit by Jake McCall that made it one to nothing. Yeah, really good job by McCall taking that pitch the other way. And then just the middle breakdown of Connor Nolan, you can see him just the way he flipped that ball up going, what was I doing? Again, that was an absolute gift for Illinois State. That was the second run of the inning. Two runs on five hits for the Birds. Kind of gives up those two earned runs, with five strikeouts in the uh, five innings of work. Arkansas did leave the bases loaded in the second. Since that point, Troy, they've not had a base runner. In fact, seven straight Razorbacks have been set down in order. Well, they really haven't even hit the ball hard, and that's the yep. thing that Agreed. you got to give the Redbird pitching staff a lot of credit. Lucier and Wyman have just kind of kept Arkansas hitters off balance. And again, you, you don't know if it's the velocity, if it's the, the placement, the movement of the pitches, but whatever they're doing, if you're an Illinois State fan, you want them to keep it up. Hats off to Wyman, too, as he faces battles. When Lucier was hit in the head by that line drive from Slavens, your point was a good one. He had no expectation even to be in this game probably at any point, but certainly not in the second inning. Yeah, he did a really good job just kind of mentally flip that switch and kind of get into game mode. Two balls and a strike now to Battles. He'll be followed by Lanzilli and Gregory. 7-8-9 and nine in the bottom of the fifth inning. We mentioned that Illinois State did defeat Arkansas 8-7 back in March of 2000. Battles drives one to deep left field, headed for the hog pan, and the hogs are on the board. Woo Pig Suey, says Jalen Battles, his first of the year. We well, saw flashes of Jalen Battles at the end of last season, and you really felt like that's the true Jalen Battles, what the consistency. We saw a tremendous big home run he had at Louisiana Tech, and this ball was absolutely hammered. He knew it right off the bat. That was a no-doubter. Sweet swing of Jalen Battles. I detect a pretty big smile there, too. The fans in the hog pen have something to cheer about here in the fifth inning. For a team that hit 109 home runs a year ago. And here's Lance Zilla. Mentioned, though, Illinois State won that game in 2000. One of my favorite things, and my favorite I mean not, is when the teams can't figure out how many games they played against each other. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because right? Illinois State believes Arkansas leads the all-time series 7-3. Razorbacks believe it's 5-2. That doesn't seem like that's really close. Yeah. <laughs> not, not even horseshoes and hand grenades close, yeah. is it? Goodness. Somebody missed three games. There's a discrepancy in the all-time season series, and there haven't been that many games played. But nonetheless, this is back to a one-run contest. And Zilli serves that back and out of play. That's one thing about a team with power is always in every game. Get a bloop and a blast, and just a big home run, solo home run like Jalen Battles just had, and you're right back in it. I think Steve Holmes' belief, though, and I agree with him, Troy, if you're going to face a team like Arkansas, face them early because they're playing in their first game. There could be some mistakes. They might be a little bit unsettled, some uncertainty on roles for bullpen and such. Better to play them now than maybe three or four weeks down the road. I agree totally. Wow. Just missed. Pretty good pitch right there. Lanzilli didn't think it was a strike, but I did up here in the booth. You just look at Chris Lanzilli and you just think power. He looks like a guy who's just going to hit the ball hard. Choking up there on that bat. Again, third among all active players in home runs. He was shortening up just a bit. And looks like he's going to do it again. He's got that bottom hand about an inch or so up off the knob of the bat. I think Barry Bonds used to choke, choke up, and I think he it did. worked out pretty well for him, didn't it? Keeps those hands close to his neck, too. There's a chopper to third. 
Gile made that a little bit tougher on that play, but he's able to scoop it and throw out Lanzilla. Good job by Gile to get to that ball before it hit on that second hop. Well, Zach Gregory came to the plate with the bases loaded and two outs in the second. I think he saw about nine pitches in the sequence before he fi finally flew out to center. Getting the start in center today rather than Braden Webb <laughs> and DVH's explanation of his defense was something like, well, he just needs to catch the balls he can catch. And <laughs> yeah. Just, just be adequate out just, there. That's what we need you to be. Because keep in mind, the comparison level over the last decade has been anything but with guys like Christian Franklin, Dominic Fletcher, Andrew Benintendi, and others, where you could say, just see if you can get one by our guy in center. And then, you know, listening to Dave Van Horn talking about Braden Webb, and he said he's just as good as any of those guys, and those are, you know, some of the most elite outfielders you've ever seen. This ball's got a chance to head to the bullpen. Goodbye, Zach Gregory with an opposite field shot. The Razorbacks have had a pair of home runs, and this game is tied. Not your typical nine-hole hitter in Zach Gregory. You said earlier in the day that you might be able to shoot one out to left with some assistance. Yeah, there's the a lot of wind blowing out to left field, and Gregory hit that ball pretty well, but Again, I don't think he, out of the box, he, he thinks I, that's going to hit the wall, so i got to start kicking on the Jets. So until about right there, he thinks that ball's not going to get out of the yard. Was he watching that the entire way I to think first? he was. He was even running sideways. i got to see that again, him running to first base, because he's, he's stumbling, he's taking a wild route because he's watching that the entire way, hoping he can celebrate rather than sprint to second. Peyton Stovall hits a soft line drive that's caught by Soberano at second. Didn't have a lot of steam on it, but Soberano made a nice play to get up and come down with the baseball. Good job by defensive positioning by Soberano and Illinois State right there. Just gobbled that line drive up. And again, if that ball gets through, this place is going to start rolling. Indeed. Still got those glasses on out there at second to Soberano. Here's Caden Wallace. Can the Hawks get three home runs in an inning? Wallace has struck out and bounced to third. He didn't get a fastball in that first pitch there from Colin Wyman. Caden Wallace has been a really tough out in some of the scrimmages that have been open to the scouts, media fans in the last month. I think when Caden Wallace is at his best is when he's kind of up the middle the other way. He's got tremendous power to right center field. Kind of hook that last one. Sometimes when yeah, you I see did. hitters hook that baseball foul, they're trying to just a little too quick, not trusting those hands and letting that ball travel into the zone. It's tough at times, right? I mean, you're trying to do some damage. Maybe the velocity is a little bit slower. You're amped up. Get a little jumpy. Yeah. Baseball America has Wallace as the 12th best overall draft prospect. He's played one year college baseball. I think the thing that a lot of people don't know about him, obviously the scouts do, but his flat-out speed. You just put him, especially yes. his straight line speed, and that's where you know it really helps when he was in the outfield, just to be able to go get baseballs. He can really go. He's about a 6'5", 60 guy. It's in there for a strike. Primarily an outfielder on the Cape with the Bourne Braves. He's back at his more familiar third base. His 14 home runs he hit last year equaled what Heston Kerstad did in his freshman campaign. I think Wyman got away with one right there. He that certainly was a hang did. Hanging breaking ball that Wallace just missed. 
That was screaming hit me as it floated towards Wallace. A couple of home runs this inning from Battles and Gregory. He's tied up this game at two apiece. Wyman looks a little bit like Nate Thompson, doesn't he? I think he does. What a fine Nate who's coaching a third and Wyman who's on the mound. I'm not so sure Wyman doesn't look like his brother of some sort. Nate Thompson's pretty thick down there at third well, base, I'm though. Well, I'm not saying he's, <laughs> he can throw up the squats. In the air, right center field. Interesting route from Cermak. He'll make the catch in the shadows below the scoreboard. And certainly the win did not help, but Troy, the Hawks did get a pair this inning. It really did. Big blow by Jalen Battles. He got things going. That ball was absolutely a dart out to left field. And then Zach Gregory. He's going to tie this ball game up. Maybe got a little bit of help from the win, but Arkansas will take it. This ball game is knotted up at twos. Redbirds got a pair of runs in the top of the first, and the Hogs were silent until those two solo home runs in the bottom of the fifth. So Connor Nolan finished strong in his last four innings of work, and he is given away to the bullpen. Cole Ramage comes on to pitch in the sixth. Feels like he's been here about seven years, hasn't it, Troy? I think he's got about three or four degrees, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you're absolutely right. A guy with tremendous experience. And again, you love having being able to pull those veterans out of, you know, out of the bullpen and are starting like Connor Nolan did. And just a special thing. And you hope that Cole Ramage is going to have a really good season. And I think that as of late, he's really had some velocity increases, kind of hitting that low to mid 90s with that fastball. And again, he's got a good sinking fastball, so you should see some ground balls with Ramage on the mound. His numbers last season, a 6.75 ERA. So a guy that in 2019 pitched 60 innings. First year was 2018, had an ERA of an even four. Here's Adrian Flores. Five, six, and seven do up for the Birds in inning number six. Flores walked in the first, struck out looking in the third inning. Soft little pop-up. This might be trouble. It's going to hang up there. Everybody get away from Moore. That's my new rule. A couple of years ago, nobody could hurt Kerstad. Nobody hurt Robert Moore. Exactly. Get out of his way, and he'll make the catch. Just great range by Moore. Makes a pretty difficult play look pretty easy. One gone for Sabotnik. One thing the Redbirds have done, though, by getting those couple of runs early today was maybe quiet this opening day crowd keep them from being too raucous. Uh, big chop at the first. Stovall was an infielder in high school playing first base here. Makes the play two outs. Almost going to look like a third baseman gobbling up he that did. baseball. Troy, this Redbird team last year played in front of 19,000 fans for the season. They may surpass that number by tomorrow in game two of this year's season. I think you can count on that. 19,000 fans. Well, you know, the sad thing about it is I think that's probably more than I played <laughs> against probably my whole career at Arkansas. Nick Guile takes strike one. Just a little bit different with college baseball and the, and the fan support you get nowadays. It is, but I also think it speaks to the fact that these Redbirds, I'm, I got a feeling for months they've been looking forward to this weekend. And their lead is gone, but a chance to regain it here in the later innings. Pulled on a strike. To Guile. I think I've just been really impressed with how they've just kind of carried themselves in this ball game. I think that just goes back to the head coach, Steve Holm. He just said, hey, you know, let's not let's not be in awe of anything. They they had some highlights of on their on their website of them practicing in the Ridgeback Fowler Indoor Center. And he said there's gonna be some nice, uh, there's a good look at head coach Steve Holm. And they're gonna have some nice facilities, but you know what? We're just going to go in there and play baseball. Yeah, don't be in awe of anything. I think that's great advice. Cole Ramage would love a really quick inning. May have one. There's a play for Wallace. How about that? Cole Ramage 
faces three and retires them all. Five and a half complete. New ball game, tied at two. Next Friday, there's an incredible gymnastics triple header on the SEC Network and ESPN app. Number 11, Missouri. Number 8, Alabama, get us started at 6 Eastern, 5 Central. Then it's number 7, Auburn, hosting number 10, Kentucky. And the night wraps up with the Georgia Gym Dogs at the barn in Fayetteville to take on 16th ranked Arkansas. What a great gymnastics lineup. Meanwhile, new pitcher. I would have bet my house, Troy, there was going to be a lefty coming on out of that bullpen. <laughs> and it is Jared Hart. He would have won that bet. Hart threw 19 and two thirds innings a season ago. 21 strikeouts. Opponents hit 307 off the left hander. He kind of has a, a little bit of lower arm slot, kind of has a big sweeping slider you'll see against left handers. There's Borfin. 0 for 2 with a couple of bounce outs to second base. That pitch is way in. Oh, got him. Clipped him. So Free base runner. There's some advantages of wearing that elbow pad. Obviously, the first one is it protects that, that elbow, but the second thing is it makes a distinct sound when it's clipped. And I think a lot of guys you know, that might not have got a hit by a pitch if they didn't have that elbow guard on, they draw that base on, or hit by a pitch. Moore gets to turn around and bat right-handed. I mentioned his numbers, 203 righty, 325 lefty when he batted last. He has been doing a lot of work from that right-handed side as he steps in here. And Troy Arkansas has every tool of the trade that you can possibly imagine, right? They've got every type of cameras, angles, video, and that is really something that Robert Moore was analyzing when it comes to the discrepancy in batting average. When that front foot lands, the bat angle is important as far as can you get to the ball and lift it or loft it. They call it early connection. Batting left-handed, his bat angle was at 90 degrees. Right-handed, it was 100 degrees. So he felt like he was too steep where that bat was to get down and be able to lift the ball and do some damage. Yeah, that's that's the amazing thing about analytics. It really kind of breaks things down where in the past you just said it just feels different. You yep. know, that, that's all you get is it, my, my swing's not the same from both sides. Now you, now you know why. Guile over at third base, he was playing way in front of the bag thinking Moore was going to bunt, and he's backed up just a couple steps. About that, a couple of free base runners. Well, you read my mind right there. That's something you don't want to do against a club that has the firepower of Arkansas. You don't want to give, give them or anyone free base runners. And I was just mentioning Arkansas struggles last year hitting lefties. And I know DVH said this week, hey, our lefties can hit lefties. But Troy Arkansas against left-handed pitchers last year was 13th in the league. That means second from the bottom. And obviously they've got a lot of left-handed power hitters or switch hitters that could do a lot of damage. To so think about a Matt Goodhart, another guy we haven't mentioned yet that is not back, along with Slavens and, and others. So they're going to see some of the best lefties all season as they did last year. I totally agree. I think that's going to be the MO of most opponents of Arkansas. Pitching coach R.D. Spees is out on the mound talking to his hurler, Jared Hart. And if that name sounds familiar, that is R.D. Spees was a pitching coach at That's UALR right. for a few years and actually played at Nebraska for Dave Van Horn. Yeah, I'll do you one better. You know, he was part of that Cornhusker team in 2001 that went to the College World Series. He was a big part of helping Coach Van Horn take the Huskers just down the road from Lincoln to Omaha to the College World Series. Trying to settle down his left-hander and saying, hey, it's just a game of catch. Here's Michael Turner. 
And Turner, tremendous bat to ball skills, more walks than strikeouts when he was at Kent State. A high average guy. Be curious to see if ever there was the thought of maybe him squaring. And if nothing else, I think Hart was curious too. They put in a play behind Borf in a second base just to see if maybe Turner might show something on the bat. Arkansas really doesn't have the M.O. of doing a lot of bunting. And you have a guy like Turner that one is a, a senior and with a lot of pop, you're going to see him swing the bat. There's that Frisbee. Started as back hip and came over the plate. It's all about that arm angle for Hart right there. That's why he's so nasty against left-handers. Tried to come front door again, but missed. Now, if you're Michael Turner right here, you, you really got to think, get those hands inside the baseball, up the middle the other way, because that, that slow breaking ball is going to, it's going to be hard to pull. If he, if he pulls it, he's going to get a ground ball to second base. Hart's next pitch. Boy, he was about ready to yank that into the new loge boxes down the right field line. He was way out in front. Razorbacks have had eight ground ball outs in this game. They don't need two on one swing. Good speed on the bases for Arkansas. Borfin at second, more at first. Strike three. Big well, pitch from Hart. Had him completely guessing right there. And Hart's got enough pop on that fastball, too. He'll run that fastball up to 90 91. See Turner wait for that breaking ball. And that's right down the chute. That is. That's the one you want to take a crack at. Big strikeout right there by Jared Hart. There's Brady Slavens through the gloaming there, that close up. He's standing in the shadows around the plate. Brady had the rocket of 103 miles an hour exit velo that hit the side of the head in the second inning of their pitcher, Jordan Lucier. A scary moment. Lucier got up, eventually threw one warm up pitch, and then took it to the house or the dugout at least. And hopefully he's okay, believe he is. Slavens hit an absolute bullet. He bounced out to first his last time in. That take right there, I think that's the difference between the 2021 Brady Slavens and the 2022. 2021, he would have been out of his shoes swinging that on that breaking ball. This time he just looks at it and waits for something inside the zone. Almost wonder if you're thinking left center here. He takes a strike on the outer edge of the plate. There's a lot of room out there. Cermak, the center fielder, shaded over into right center about four or five steps. And Huggins, who's the lone man on the island out there, was a former shortstop and a former second baseman, now playing left field. Here's the 2-1. Ground ball to first. Fitted by McCaw. He'll take the sure out, retire Slavens. Both runners move up, but now two outs. That brings up Jalen Battles, who had the really big swing. Got things going last inning. Might help that he's right-handed. Seems like the lefties have struggled just a little bit against Jared Hart. Back-to-back -back righties for Arkansas. It's not like you can pitch around Battles and get to a lefty. Battles was batting towards the bottom of the lineup most of last year, hitting seventh here on opening day. His homer last inning put Arkansas on the board. Now he's trying to give the Razorbacks their first lead and take strike one. Fourth and a third, more at second. Base hit would easily score a pair. It's a couple of quick strikes, though, from Hartz. Be a pick me up for the Redbirds if he's able to work around a hit batter and a walk. I think Battles missed the pitch of the 
at bat on the first pitch right down the chute. Now Hart's in the driver's seat. You might see something even breaking ball down and into battles. Jalen had six home runs all of a year ago. He's on the board already this season. Wave and a miss. How about that frame, though? Troy from Hart after the first two reached. A really good move by Steve Holm to bring in Jared Hart. And he just came in, was a giant killer, and just a huge breaking ball. That back foot breaker against Battles. On to the seventh, tied to two, Illinois State and Arkansas. And they share one alum who tragically passed a couple of months ago in Gene Ramirez. You may remember him as a catcher, a part of the 2012 College World Series team here at Arkansas. And then he went on and played at Illinois State in 2015-2016. He was the bullpen catcher for the Tampa Bay Rays. And tragically, again, took his own life at the age of 28, a guy that had worked with Pitchers like Ryan Stanick and Jalen Beeks here at Arkansas was also catching them as the bullpen coach or catcher with Tampa Bay. Ramage bounced that throw to first to Stovall, and they're able to retire Greg Nichols for the first out in the seventh inning. And Troy, it's just a, a terrible story. And, you know, that was part of the news not that long ago, and a guy who played for both of these programs. Yeah, we, we were talking to Coach Holm, the head coach of Illinois State, and he said, yeah, that's a – Kind of a bad connection between both teams, and it was just such a sad story. And you just kind of shake your head at that one, but yeah, you really, it's just a tragedy. Hey, Ramage getting some quick outs and some ground ball outs. That's a play by Wallace. Five up, five down since Cole Ramage has entered the game, and the soft contact has really been a theme all game long. Cole Ramage could be huge for this Arkansas team if he can come in and have success like he's having right now. You got to love the ground ball outs. And I think that's what, in early on in his career, that's what he showed. He had a really good sinking fastball. A lot of guys would think they're on it. They'd just top it. And uh, it seems like that ball kind of flattened out over the years on him. But it seems like he's really got it dialed in this season. Back to the top of the lineup in Soberano. It's one for three and a couple of ground outs to more. What's more irritating as a hitter? The pop-up or the soft, easy ground ball that you have to uh, run the out? pop-up every time. <laughs> Hated the pop-up. And the pop-up and foul ground is the worst. Oh, goodness. Because you've got a fake run to yeah, first. Yeah, you, you kind of halfway run. You don't want your co coach want to get mad at you, but you're like, the ball's 40 feet foul. Robert Moore won't get that. So, Soberano has his... Second hit of the game. First base runner against Ramage. That's six hits now for the Birds compared to just three for the Hawks. Just kind of guided that one out yeah, there. Did. Pretty good run. You can see, watch Turner's reaction. He just kind of goes, oh, man, that ball was left up just a little bit too much. But good at bat by Soberano. It also brings up now the heart of the lineup as the Redbirds try and regain the lead. Huggins and then the dangerous Ryan Cermak is on deck. He's three for three. That one's fair into the corner. Let's see if Soberano might have a chance to score. Borfin pursuing at the base of the fence. Soberano's going to be waved in. And Battles will have no throw. Illinois State back in front. It's almost like Battles like motion to his ear saying, hey, nobody told me to throw that ball home. I think he had a shot at him. I do too. I was surprised he didn't cut it loose because there was really no chance of Huggins advancing to third unless there was a throwaway. And that's that's a tough play for Borfin over there in the, in the outfield. You don't want to be too aggressive. You got to see. You know it's going to have that double ricochet. But I just was really shocked that Battles didn't make a a good effort right there. So not only do the Redbirds have the lead again, but also Cermak will bat, and a base hit here would get that two-run cushion back. I pitch really careful right here to Ryan Cermak. I would agree. 11 home runs a year ago, 40 runs batted in. Honestly, I don't know if I throw him a strike in this at-bat. Arkansas does have a lefty down the pin warming up. Well, 
Well, that one wasn't close either. I almost think I just put a four up yeah, and just I, put him down to first base. I don't even attempt to throw something close. I tend to agree. Team high and extra base hits. Runs batted in and homers last year, and you can see Ramage being patient with him. Zach Morris down in the pen for Arkansas. D1 Baseball has the top draft prospects in this Missouri Valley Conference. There's three straight DBU players, and then Cermak breaks up another few DBU players, and that's how highly he is thought of, fourth in the league. What, did he offer on a 3-0 pitch? Apparently not. Doesn't matter. That's ball four now. With the left-hander coming up, I'd really be surprised if Dave Van Horn doesn't go out and get Cole Ramage right here, and that's what he's going to do. Yeah, it would be odd to work around even a red-hot three-hole hitter who's a righty to get to a lefty to face him unless you're going to bring in the lefty. Very quiet, Baumwalker Stadium here on the top of the seventh inning. Couple of quick outs before a single. RBI double from Huggins. And now a 3-2 Illinois State lead. Oh, a couple quick ground balls. One back to the pitcher himself in Ramage, and then a ground ball to third base to Caden Wallace. And Arkansas kind of felt like, okay, we're about ready to get back in the dugout and hit again. Soft line drive and then a hard double by Huggins down the left field line in a play that you felt like that Battles might have had a shot to try to cut that run down at the plate. Ready for a pitching change. New pitcher coming on. Redbirds back in front. I'll tell you the new lefty in a moment. Monday night at 7 Eastern, 6 Central on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. It'll be a three and a half hour recap of this year's men's and women's swimming and diving championships. Florida Gators have won the last nine titles on the men's side, while the Kentucky Wildcats are the defending champs on the women's side. Coming up on Monday, well, Zach Morris comes on here in the seventh inning with the Redbirds back in front. Morris had some flashes last season of some really quality outings, and a guy that's going to be around the plate, he's going to sit in that 90 to 93, 94 mile an hour fastball. Good kind of sweeping, breaking ball, tough against lefties. That's why they brought him in right here to get this last out of the seventh inning. See his innings last year, 15. This was a guy who really shortened up his delivery, trying to throw more downhill, repeat his mechanics. He went to the Cape Cod League, though, Troy, and he was outstanding in 20 plus innings. Averaged more than a strike out of frame against the best hitters. That'll give you some confidence on it. I would think. Facing the cleanup hitter McCaw with a couple of runners on base. And now a 3-2 Illinois State lead. McCaw drove in the first run for the Redbirds during a two run first inning. Hometown product there from Bloomington. Swing and a foul off Turner. He really stretched out. He put that left leg kind of not on the ground, but really shifted wide. And that left him exposed for a pretty good shot. It has him talking to himself. Right I think. Now. I think it might have got a piece of that hand. Yeah, it, off the ground, it ricocheted off the ground and almost hit that knuckle. Sometimes you see catchers will put that hand behind behind them, but with runners on base, kind of left that thing exposed. Heat-seeking missile right to that throwing hand. Pitch didn't quite have the break or the snap needed. Sometimes when the baseball gets cold like that, it just gets really slick. You see Zach Morris kind of reaching down and getting him some dirt to try to maybe get a little more friction on that left hand. Redbirds have had one fly out to an outfitter the entire game. They put the ball in play, hit a lot of ground balls, trying to build that lead back up again. 
rip and a miss. Really nice fastball, good placement too. A little bit of tail to inside to the left-handed hitting McCall. I go back to the fast part here. I think that is a pitch he feels like he's got the most confidence in. Bit of a closed stance from Morris, hiding that baseball. Dribbler to third. There is Wallace, inning over. But the Redbirds regain the lead. Stretch time at Baumwalker on opening day. Illinois State leads 3-2. Well, back in the first inning, before these fans were truly settled, Redbirds had a couple of runs. That was McCall with an RBI base hit. Also, a buck made it 2-0. Detroit stayed that way into the fifth frame. Yeah, Jalen Battles got all that. We got things going for Arkansas with the big solo home run. Zach Gregory hit one pretty good, maybe a little bit of wind aid, and that tied the game. But then in the seventh, after two outs, there was a single and then this double by Aiden Huggins, and that gave the Redbirds the 3-2 lead. There's your recap on that replay. Soberano was being waved in before he even got halfway to the second base. He, he was, <laughs> That's like, this is our time to score. score. Here's Lanzilli. Lanzilli, Gregory, and Stovall. So righty, lefty, lefty against the lefty. Hard to got a strikeout and a ground out. Another strikeout after he put a couple of runners on base. The free way in the sixth. Hogs had a chance to take their first lead. Didn't do it. Redbirds got a run in the seventh. That was probably the pitch to hit there, and it's nothing in two. Sometimes it seems like Arkansas hitters are a little too passive on that fastball. Maybe trying to think about working the count a little too much. And Lanzilli just reaching for that to spoil it and stay alive. Arkansas's had three hits in the game, and two of them have left the building. And one took the pitcher out of the game with a liner off the side of his head. Ground ball into the hole. Backhanded by Nichols. Throwing across his body, and he can't get Lanzilli. In fact, he pulled McCaw from the base. Should be an infield base hit for Lanzilli, but an important base runner for the Razorbacks. Yeah, just a little fisted ground ball into the hole at short. Great effort by Nichols. I think that's the only chance he's got is to come up and just give it all he's got. It, the throw just pulled the first baseman. McCall off the back. Lanzilli runs pretty well. Just kind of gave a little lunge there at the end, and that's a big base runner for Arkansas. There's a base hit for Lanzilli as first as a hawk. Here is Gregory. Had it with the bases loaded, flied out in the second, homered in the fifth. This Arkansas team last year started the season with 12 straight wins. Late in this game on opening day, playing from behind, hoping to avoid an 0-1 start. There's a strike to Gregory. Late last season, Arkansas, while they became the last Power 5 team to lose its 10th game, finally get to double digits and losses. At the same time, they had their 13th come from behind win. It felt like it was a pattern, in part because of the genius of cops keeping teams from extending leads or adding to their score, while Arkansas would eventually find a way to come back late. Soft line drive, caught by Soberano. He was playing in a few steps at second, not his normal position, and I thought maybe for a split second that might cost him a base hit, but he made the play. Yeah, off the bat, it looks like it's going to get over Soberano's head, but it just didn't have much on it, and Lanzilli kind of face-planted and going back into first base. Curious that maybe we might see a Braden Webb hitting there for Gregory with the right-handed batter with some thumb. Gregory batted. Now it's Stovall. Just lined out and grounded out twice in his college debut. And there was a lot of people last year that thought this young man would never make it to college. That number might have been in the $2 million range that he could have passed up had he desired to go in that first round, maybe the first couple of rounds. 
high school shortstop and a hitting star in the state of Louisiana. So the Hawks not only got him to come here, they kept him away from the hometown or home state school. Yeah, I think so. That's a that's a big thing for Arkansas. Huge get to get Peyton Stovall to get to campus. Mm. Take strike one. He's just one of those guys that he just looks like a hitter. He's proven himself in the fall and early in the spring in scrimmages, and you know that he's going to have a huge career here at Arkansas. One on, one out, one run deficit for the Razorbacks. Hart's next pitch, fouled back and out of play. Got a fastball there and couldn't quite square it up, two and two. I think for your Lanzilla, you got to be on your toes. Hart throws a lot of sweeping, breaking balls, might get one in the dirt right here. That's As a base runner, you have to read down angle. If you see that ball, if you think it's going to bounce in the dirt, if you get a good break, you got to go. Fifth-year junior Jared Hart's next pitch to the true freshman is fouled back. Isn't this the contrast right now in college baseball? You have a guy that, had he wanted to play, would have been able to get a signing bonus of seven digits facing a fifth-year junior <laughs> in Jared Hart. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're going to have a wide span. Uh, Coach Holm talked about you're going to have some guys are 18 and some guys are 23, 24. Bends down and out. That's the that's a sign of Peyton Stovall, just the experience right there. 95% of freshmen swing at that pitch. That is a tough pitch to lay off of. I can tell you as a junior or senior when I played, I swung at it more times than I like to admit. And he tracked it the entire way too. Exactly. Soft throw to first. I think this Arkansas crowd is just looking for something to They've cheer waiting, about. They've been waiting, haven't they? Rip and a miss. Two gone, seventh inning. Challenged him with a fastball. Really nice pitch by Jared Hart. He climbs the ladder, goes up in the zone. Good velocity and great location. Well, oh, he's way late on that. Yeah, he, he, is, he was a mile late. I think he's thinking off speed and just could not react to that fastball. Yes, you got to sit fastball and adjust breaking ball because you're, you're going to get beat every time. This might be the guy the Razorbacks would really love to have up in this spot in their fortune at Caden Wallace batting. Hit a shot to deep right center out towards the track. The wind probably beat it down a bit back in the fifth inning. Maybe with no wind, had it been able to sneak out, it would have been the third home run of the inning. But that's it, a couple of solo homers in the fifth for the Hogs who are trailing again. in the air and foul down the right field side and this should drift way up in the seats be out of play. One point last year he hit in 15 straight games. Hit 331 just in conference games alone. I mean that shows you overall how he kept getting better and better. Against some of, some of the best competition in the country in the SEC. And that ball is straight up the chute. It is indeed. McCaw waiting for this one to come down. Not a confident catch, but he made the play and the getting ends. Razorbacks have stranded five in the game, still down a run. Here's your preseason poll as far as the coaches are concerned, and I would hate to have to pick the West. Arkansas up on top, barely over the defending national champions, Mississippi State and Old Miss. LSU has a new coach with College World Series experience. Texas A&M has a new coach with College World Series experience, and a lot of it in Jim Schlossnagel. And I think it's a little bit easier usually to pick in the East, isn't it, with Vandy? Yeah, it's not, not too tough on that side. Uh, Tell you what, this conference is absolutely loaded with talent. Morris got the final out in the seventh, facing Flores to begin this eighth inning. Hogs down to their final six outs. Adrian Flores 
out of California. This team is right in the heartland there in Illinois, but it is comprised of Canadians and Californians. Yeah, six guys from the state of Cali. Coach Holm able to go out to his old homeland too. Pick up some players. That one bounced from Morris. Really doesn't want to provide a free base runner late in this game. That puts a lot of pressure on this Arkansas defense if he does. Arkansas does have somebody warming in the bullpen. Not close. Leadoff walk in the eighth for Illinois State. Zebulon Vermillion warming up in the new bullpen out there near the Pitching Development Center. Redbirds will also run here. I think it's Sokolov. I think it's a really good move by head coach Steve Holm. He's going to try to get some good speed on the bases. That's a huge insurance run if they could get that one pushed around right here. He not on the lineup card? There he is. Our umpire said, oh, yeah, he's right here. Mark Wagers. Coach Holmes like, yeah, number 11. He's right there. Also going to have a pinch hitter. I think that's what Just the conversation blouse. was about. So Blount hitting for Sabotnik. Another Sabotnik. Wisconsin native. Yeah, if Sabotnik was 0 for 2 with the line out and a ground ball. The pinch runner just about got locked up. Sokolov couldn't quite get his footwork going as he went in standing. First college game for Josh Blount. He was a day late on that bond. He was stabbing when the ball was already in the glove of Turner. That's probably not going to work. Yeah, it was a really unsure attempt at that bunt. Really kind of feeling for it. What you want to do on the on the bunt is you don't want to move the bat. You just want to move your knees up and down. That was a perfect pitch to bunt. Yeah, though. that was right down Broadway. That wasn't much better. Michael Turner's taking a beating back there today. He, he got another ball that ricocheted. And he, he got a bit it. of a smirk on his face as he wore it. Oh, my Ooh. goodness. That'll that, rattle your teeth, won't it? That'll loosen some fillings. I'll tell you what. How about the reaction from Blount? He went, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> you, can just, you can just hear it how hard it hit the mask. Now, here's the question. Do you let him swing away if you're Steve Holm, or do you? I think you're so angry you tell him to bunt again. Yeah, you just sit there and go, you, you, you were brought into bunt. Let's but see you do it. I don't put this pitch close to the plate, I'll tell you that. I throw a high fastball. There you go. He was squaring, but he held back. Because if you do offer, that's hard. It's a hard pitch to get down. See, I always like to pitchers to throw, not when I was bunting, but throw breaking balls. Because when you bunt, you're usually bunting off a machine. It's always straight. It's always hard. It's hard to break uh, bunt breaking balls. He tried to bunt on two strikes, and that's a K. That'll be the easiest strikeout that Morris gets all season. That was a futile attempt in that sequence. Here comes Coach Van Horn, and he's going to make the call to the bullpen. I think we'll see Zebulon Vermillion, who was up warming just a couple of moments ago. So the Redbirds have a runner on with one out in the eighth. Leading 3-2, looking for some insurance. 
We'll step aside. Redbirds trying to get a win here on opening day at Baumwalker Stadium. Zebulon Vermillion, ZV, comes on to pitch here in the eighth inning, becomes the fourth hurdler the Razorbacks have used today. Vermillion might be one of those guys. He could easily be the closer for this Arkansas team. He's got great stuff. Mid-90s fastball, a really tight slider, and that's the pitch he likes to go to. He had an outstanding game down at Louisiana Tech in Ruston last season, and that just kind of really propelled him to a good season last year. He's also a captain this year, and it is extremely meaningful. A little bit later on this season, we'll play some sound from Zach and what this means because last year he got to witness firsthand his roommate on the road, one Kevin Copps, leading by example, making the most of his last go around and hoping a little bit of that magic dust is rubbed off on him as Nick Child bats with a runner on and one out in the eighth. Child 0 for three, bounced out to Wallace at third his last time in. Picked to first, and boy, Stovall was lucky to catch that. Guile had one home run a year ago. And that's way in. Redbirds got a couple of runs in the first. They regain the lead in the seventh. Big pitch for Vermillion right here. He needs to get back in this count. If you're Guile, you want to be real selective. Didn't miss by much, but it did. You might see Gal right here maybe take two pitches. They really want to push that base runner up to second base. You know, they try to bunt him up to get him in scoring position, so you know he's going to be very selective. Right down the middle for a strike. Arkansas with just four hits today. Said a high-powered offense hasn't found that last gear quite yet. They don't want to fall any further behind, but that ball is going to travel right out to Slavens. Brady will reach up and make the play. Outfitters have been able to take this game off for the most part. Gregory hasn't had a play, nor has Borfin, at least in the air. I think this is a really big batter for Vermillion and Arkansas. Illinois State would love to push across one more run. You feel like that two runs just gives him a lot more, a lot better chance to hold this lead. Greg Nichols is 0 for 2 as he fouls one back and out of play. Nichols struck out his first half bat, walked in the second, and then grounded right back to the pitcher. Vermillion misses way up and out. Almost kind of a bluff steal down there by the base runner, Sokolov. And you wonder if he was just trying to time it to see if he can steal a base or just kind of giving a little bit of a bluff. He's got a pretty good lead over there first. You know he's got some good speed. He's been there so long I've forgotten about him. Got a pitching change in between. Pinch hitter. Two balls and a strike again, so Vermillion fighting it just a bit. A good count to run on. I don't think he's going to be going anywhere, but if he is, this would be a good count to start the runner. At the knees, called strike. Gave a big bluff right there like he was going to go. That's a look at concentration on the face of Greg Nichols at Sacramento City College. The 2-2 from Vermillion. Count's gone full. Now Sokola finally will be able to take off on this payoff.
3-2 pitch. Strike three called. Nichols was a spectator. Redbird strand a runner. Hawks have six outs with which to try and come back. Opening day in college baseball, and the Sooners take down Auburn three to nothing. Georgia winner over Albany. How about the defending national champions losing in Starkville? They get one hit today, Troy, by the Dirtbacks. Yeah, Long Beach State. Tell you what, they've they haven't missed any practices out in Long Beach. So there's the weather's pretty decent out there. Vanderbilt and Oklahoma State, that might be the most enjoyable non-conference matchup that is least played on a home site. That is in Nashville, scoreless in the bottom of the third. Hogs haven't lost hope yet, but they have never led in this game. Trailing 3-2 as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning, and Sherbinsky comes on. And the right-hander out of Rapid City, South Dakota, set to work. Another big-bodied right-hander. Redbird just keep running out those big frame pitchers, 6'2", 210. You can see him run that fastball up in the upper 80s, low 90s with a sweeping slider. It's going to be Borfin, Moore, and Turner. Hart to the lineup. I mentioned a couple of times that game back in March of 2020 before the shutdown in which Illinois State won 8-7. to It's a strange similarity, Troy, because Arkansas in that game had 15 hits, but no homers. Today they have just four hits, but both of their runs have scored on solo shots. Yeah, and that's what you think. You feel like that Arkansas always has a chance to they swing the big stick. Borfin's got a lot of power as well. Big swing right there. Jace was hit by a pitch back in the sixth. Oklahoma came through here last year, but Jace did not play in the game. So this is well, his first opportunity to be on the field. At bomb walk. Shurabinski runs one a little bit high. Pretty good life in that I would fastball. Say, I would agree. Becomes the eighth pitcher used in this game. Again, that didn't miss by a whole lot. That's pretty good pitches. Good eye by Borfin. Sometimes you can just tell by hitter's body language and they know a pitch is outside the zone when they're locked in. Big rip and a miss. I was wondering if he might just turn that bat loose if he got a fastball, and he did. And came up empty. Troy, another note, though, you talk about, you know, getting off to a good start. Arkansas has won 27 consecutive season openers as well as 27 home openers. That's a wave and a miss at a high fastball. The last time this team lost at home on opening day was 1994. That's a long time ago. Great fastball right here. I'm not sure if that thing's a strike. I think it's up and out that's of the up, zone, but Borfin couldn't lay off. And it's a big first out by Colton Serbinski. Seven strikeouts for Redbirds pitchers. Moore walked back in the sixth. Got a comeback into the pitcher. Struck out looking. Pretty good pitch for strike one. Pitcher's pitch. I think it's a good take by Moore. Great pitch by Serbinski, like you said, right on the inside corner. Not much you can do with that ball. Moore got under that one. Cermak in center, waiting patiently. Two outs. Hawks have four outs with which to work. Sherbinsky, a guy that pitched at Charlotte. We know that's a pretty good baseball program. And, you know, he was advertised as 94-95. I would say even though our radar gun isn't working, he's had some good juice. Yeah, it sure looks like it. You can tell that's when Moore doesn't get on top of that baseball, that good hard fastball. Michael Turner has been hit by a pitch. He's 0 for 2 with a couple of Ks. I would say, Troy, is he's dotting some pitchers. We have seen some good pitchers from Illinois State, even Lucier, the starter, who went an inning and a third but was hit by that line drive in the head and had to leave the game. I'm guessing if you would have told Steve Holm that your starter is going to come out after an inning and a third, he probably would not have picked this as a recipe for a win. They're in line to do just that. Again, I think that goes a lot back to Colton, Colin Wyman. 
that came in and really kind of shut Arkansas down after that line drive off of Lucier. Serbinski, he looks every bit of as a closer. Yeah, he's going to be a weapon. I would not be looking down at the bullpen to see anybody warming up before this ninth occurs either. I don't think so. He's the man. Another ball in the air. Sir Mack making the call, and everybody else get out of his way. Hawks go in order. Arkansas down to its final three outs at opening day. There's your line score. Not a lot on the bottom, as you may have gathered by now. Arkansas has never led in this game. Redbirds got that go-ahead run in the seventh. And another chance to see if they can push across some insurance. Yeah, that was a big double back in the seventh inning after a single by Silverano. Huggins ripped one down the line, and Illinois State took the lead. Good look at Zebulon Vermillion. He wants to come in and slam the door right here on the, the ninth. Wolfman, the catcher batting ninth. There's a play for Gregor. He's been out there for a couple of hours today, and that's the first chance. Well, they said just catch what you can catch. That one caught him. <laughs> that was not going to be a difficult play. Vermillion has retired all three that he has faced. Now Back to the top of the lineup. For Soberano, who got that single, Troy, in the seventh, what looked to be kind of a harmless two-out hit, and then a batter later, he scored in the double to put the Redbirds in front. Yeah, he just kind of guided one right over the head of Robert Moore at second base. Just barely got that bat. I was going to say, it almost looked like he offered it that ball. Can't ask anything else out of your leadoff hitter. Two for four with a pair of singles. Vermillion blowing on his hands between pitches. Lost a little bit of our sunshine. Uh, temperature's really starting to dip now. Wasn't even that warm when the sun was out, but now it's down to 43. Can you promise something better over the next two days? I don't know about promise, but I think we're pretty safe. <laughs> okay. We're going to be in the 60s. All right. Noon start tomorrow, by the way. There is a basketball game you may have heard about with Tennessee at 3. Softball's playing around the clock like a marathon or a telethon. I don't know how many games they're going to play. <laughs> 3, 4, 20. I'm not sure this weekend. That's not a sport for the faint of heart, Troy, the softballers. It's a grind, isn't it? Are they Two balls and two strikes to Soberano. And Vermillion missed. That was actually ball three and then ball four. So on the full count pitch, put the Redbirds leadoff runner on base. What that does is unless you get a double play right here, it's going to bring up Ryan Cermak Indeed. with runners on base. And that's not the recipe you want. You saw him, they pitched, literally pitched around him in his last at bat. But Aiden Huggins had the RBI double down the left field line in the seventh that put the Redbirds up 3-2. Huggins a sixth-year senior. He's on his third different position. He was at Cloud County Community College, which I'm guessing is CCCC, and then he went to Cisco Community College, which would be CCC. It's mixing it up just a bit. <laughs> ISU really breaks things up. The next pitch cut on the mist. That's that slider right there by Vermillion. I think that's his best pitch. A lot of confidence to be able to throw it. 1-0. I go back to it right there after that kind of a swing. One ball, one strike, one on, one out. That one nearly came so far in, it almost clipped Huggins. Arkansas in double play depth. Battle's kind of swung around to the hole in short. Almost feels like Vermillion's going every other pitch. He'll yeah. be not close, then he'll dial it in and kind of repeat. Well, it seems like he's got pretty good command of that slider. It's the fastball that's giving him fits. We get a, that too. <laughs> call, call that one again.
almost looked like Casey Opitz behind the plate, smothering that pitch in the dirt. Turner just lost everything, the mask, the helmet. Kept the ball in the front, though. Kept his earpiece in. Missed again. So a couple of walks. And not only will Cermak bat Troy, he'll get a couple of teammates on in front of him. Yeah, it's a really good combination for Illinois State. And Dave Van Horn's seen all he needs to see from Zebulon Vermillion. He's going to go to the pen again. Pitcher number five about to come in for the Razorbacks, Gabe Starks. Headed on, we'll step out. Redbirds trying to add to their 3-2 lead. Pine Bluff native Gabriel Starks comes on to pitch here in the ninth inning, inheriting a couple of base runners. Well, Gabe Starks has an electric arm. He can sit in the mid-90s with that fastball. Pretty good curve, pretty much a two-pitch guy. Doesn't throw the change up very much, but he can find the zone. He's got some stuff that's really tough to hit. It was extremely good in that California Collegiate League with almost uh, 13 and a half strikeouts per nine innings for the Santa Barbara Foresters. Pretty good place to play in the summer. Maybe his delivery isn't quite as violent as years past. Regardless, he's facing the most dangerous hitter in this game today. Cermak three for three with a walk. Just one more run would feel like maybe two or three right now for the Redbirds. And that one spiked and a couple of free bases. Soberano to third, Huggins follows to second. Two walks and a wild pitch, Troy. Now do you walk Cermak right here? Oh, there's just one out though, that's the problem. Infield's yeah. gonna play in. If you do walk him, the thing it does is it puts a lot of pressure on Starks it to does. throw strikes. With a left-handed cleanup hitter yeah. on deck. I think that's probably your deciding factor. Good swing. And what a short, just compact stroke that Cermak has. I mean, he just almost just flicks his wrist to get that ball bat through the zone. Very little movement. Bent that pitch off the corner in the fans. Definitely off, get the, that call. Yeah, definitely off the plate, but good location by Starks. In the air, but foul way out of play down the line and right. The question is, what do you throw Cermak to try to get him out? Does he try to climb the ladder with the fastball and maybe hope for a swing and a miss or a pop-up? Throwing the breaking ball a couple times in a row. We're about to find out. <laughs> Fouled back again, out of play. He's pulled a really good pitch out there. I don't know Let's if that's so. even a strike. Down and away at about probably low 90s. Low to mid 90s. That's a tough pitch. Low hand slot there for Ryan Cermak until Starks comes set. A long pause, so much in fact that Cermak calls time. Starks is really deliberate. I haven't really seen Arkansas try to pitch Cermak in. Everything's been out and away. Turner sets up in here. And he got the corner. Strike three. 
That's well, just Moxie from the kid. Yeah, outstanding pitch by Gabriel Starks. Goes right in, and good job by Michael Turner to frame that pitch. I think that's a strike. Cermak, he, he was definitely sitting away. It was going to be a fastball or a breaking ball. I'm not sure if Turner made that call or Matt Hobbs from the dugout, but that was an outstanding call. Doesn't get a lot easier because here is McCaw. 367 a year ago, singled in a run way back in the first one for four in the game. To the screen, Turner's going to flip to Starks, who applies the tag. My goodness, what a play at the plate. Already the Redbirds were wondering if maybe that's a reviewable play. Somehow Starks got down the mound, found the sliding base runner Soberano, and ends the inning to keep this a one-run game. It's still a 3-2 game for a split second in the top of the ninth. It looked like the Redbirds had added an insurance run on what could have been a wild pitch. Watch Turner pop up and play this carom. Starks able to take the shovel, and I don't think he ever got to the dish. No, he was out. Yeah, Soberano. Starks, I don't think he was really trying to, but just kind of blocked home plate <laughs> with his body. That was I think a great I, effort by Turner, though. I think Mark Wagers was just trying to make sure that Gabe Starks held onto that yep. baseball. That's what he was waiting on that call for, but that was just great effort. And the, here's the thing. If Turner gets any kind of a piece of that ball, it doesn't ricochet off that pad and come right back to him if he deflects it, but he completely misses it. It was like almost like a toss back back there. And we'll see you with Sherbensky and raise you a Kuba Talitz because he's on facing Slavens in the bottom of the ninth. Sherbensky looked awfully good with a perfect eighth for me to take him out. I, but I don't understand this move either. Kuba Talitz, yeah, he had 25 and a third innings, 28 strikeouts. Three saves a year ago. And the man who had six, Derek Salata, will be the starter on Sunday. <laughs> Slavens had the single off the head of the starter, Lucier, in the second. Couple of ground outs to first since. Hogs have had four hits today. They've left just five. Left runners at second and third in the sixth. Left the bases loaded in the second. There have not been too many opportunities. Big swing from Slavens. Kupitowicz gave up three home runs in the 25 and a third innings this season to go. Opponents hit 294 off the right-hander. Another ground ball. Soberano gets a nice big hop, one out, ninth inning. This was Jalen Battles back in the fifth inning. Got the Hogs on the board in a big time way. First home run of the season. It was a ball that was hit over 420 feet. Arkansas fans would love to see Battles get, into, get a hold of another one. Arkansas has produced 10 ground ball outs today. Some soft contact, and that one rolls in and misses to Battles. Wind has died down. It's no longer much of a factor at all. Kubatowicz is... Throwing a couple of breaking pitches to Battles to start this sequence. Threw a fastball for a strike, but he kept it on the outside corner. Yeah, good location for a 2-0 fastball. You're absolutely right, Brett. You got to sit back out there again. You don't want to come to the inner third against Jalen Battles. 
That's off the corner. This Arkansas team last year, they had the best on base percentage in the SEC, second in slugging percentage. They scored the most runs. They led the country at home. Bit of a climb today just to try and take a lead. They have not done so at any point. Ooh. Pretty similar to the previous pitch that was called a ball. A little inconsistency right there. I think the fans got a little bit of reason to complain right there. Not only is it away, it looks like it's almost up and away. A little bit up, yeah, I would agree. And there's strike three. And a really good pitch right there by Cooper Towitz. Just froze battles with that off speed pitch. I think he's thinking fastball, he gets a breaker. Again, one of those ones that out of the hand you just give up when you're a hitter. The last racer back to reach base was this man, Chris Lanzilli, with an infield single leading off the seventh, and Arkansas did not move him. He's the last chance this afternoon. Will that one stay in play? Waltman back looking, and it's up on top of the roof. I think Lanzilli got the pitch he wanted. He just missed it. Get a guy that's hit 42 home runs in his career. Tremendous power. Racerbacks are down to their final strike and out in the ninth inning. Last year's team, their DNA was to come from behind wins. New year, new team, new DNA. Trying to figure what that might be a couple of weeks or a couple of months from now. But for a team that won its first 12 games last year, they're in danger of starting 0-1. Was that a swing? That's the fourth inning. That might have been a ringer. In the ninth inning, no, says Greg Harmon. Close, but no cigar. Well, he almost come back with that same exact pitch. Checked again. Did he offer again? Answer is no again with some help from the fans as well, just in case. Almost like you go to the well a third time if Why you're Cooper Towitz. Get some pretty close check swings on Lanzilli right there. Getting Lanzilli with two strikes. Definitely has the ability to take it out of the yard and tie this game up. Wave and a miss, and the Redbirds on opening day. Give the Razorbacks a 3-2 loss. You've got to give Illinois State, the pitching staff, a lot of credit. They've really kept this Arkansas, potent Arkansas offense off balance. They only scraped out five hits in this game, and again, just outstanding from top to bottom. Big win indeed for Illinois State. The Razorbacks muster just four hits today. Game two of the series will be tomorrow. That'll be at noon on SEC Network Plus, and Sunday will be the finale of this three-game series. So hope to have you along then on a busy week here on campus. For Troy Eklund and our entire crew, I'm Brett Dolan thanking you for watching. The Razorbacks never led today. The Redbirds win it by a score of 3-2, pull off the upset on opening day. Good afternoon and so long from Baumwalker Stadium.